the potential deal is one I've been reporting a good deal on over the last few weeks, as you may know. Uber obviously had engaged with you for quite some time. Um, you chose to go in this direction. It's been my understanding that you believe and your board believes consolidation is something that's necessary in your business. And yet you chose to go with a, with a company that's not going to consolidate the level of competition in the U.S. probably only will exacerbate that competition. So why was this deal the better deal than what Uber had on the table? Yeah, Dave, great to finally meet you. Uh, I have been uh, watching your, your reporting because frequently you are breaking information that is uh, before I even find out about it, which is uh, a unique position to be in. But I, look, let, me, let me describe <laughs> it this way. The board had a very easy decision to make. Regardless of our options, we went with uh, a much higher offer with much more deal certainty that brought us significantly more, uh, or I should say significant financial strength and flexibility to continue doing what we're doing now. So it, our, if you read our shareholder letters, uh, third quarter last year, we outlined the challenges and the opportunities in front of uh, food ordering and meal delivery in the United States. It very clearly laid out our strategy, and our strategy was working. Pre-COVID, we were 150 to 200 basis points ahead of our plan that we put forward. Obviously, through this COVID crisis and the stay-at-home orders, uh, delivery and pickup has really accelerated, and that has put us in an even better position. And so we, were, we weren't looking to sell the company. We were actually drawn into a process. And by the time the board started evaluating numbers, which you were uh, clearly reporting on, that allowed many other players uh, in the world to realize what was potentially about to happen. And so I can say that Yitza and his team at Takeaway moved exceptionally fast. We're very much aligned right. strategically uh, from a vision perspective. I've known Yitza for a decade, and they know the bogey. So they came in and destabilizing the U.S. Uh, food delivery market, it's a strategic imperative for them. And so you have to think about the, the global dynamics and the, glo the global leadership strategy at play when you put the most valuable food ordering platform in the world potentially on the market. Um, you know, it's something that they have been emphasizing in the comments, at least briefly here, that, that we've had from them on the call and in the press release and the like, Matt, is there's going to be a transformation in execution of your business. Does that imply that somehow you have not been effectively executing? Are you saying those are comments from the takeaway team? Yes. Yes. That's I'm quoting from some of the things that they've said, that this will include a transformation in execution. OK. No, I just got off the investor call with them and thousands of investors, and that definitely was not the story. The story is they believe in our strategy. They believe in our execution. Uh, I had a conversation with Yitza the day we had our initial shareholder letter outlining the strategy, which we have executed against uh, very successfully to date. So there is no transformation in execution. What this is, is increased financial strength and stability so we can continue doing what we're doing right now. We are winning back share. We are winning back share in the tier three markets and the broader rural and suburban markets. Our strategy of excessive economic rewards to incentivize new diner attraction and retention is working we are working towards giving away a billion dollars this year through our loyalty pipelines from restaurants to consumers. This is not our dollars. This is not our shareholders' investments. This is directly supporting loyalty uh, from independent restaurants and enterprise restaurants to consumers. This is all working. Right. What the just eat transform what the what the shareholder transformation does is it allows us to continue on this strategy as a much broader, more diversified organization where we can tap into revenue and profits from the UK, from Germany, from the Netherlands, from Canada, from Australia, and on and on. Right, but it would seem then, Matt, to imply that the US market is going to become even more competitive, that instead of taking out a competitor, for example, as the Uber deal would have done, which clearly was going to raise antitrust concerns, you're going to be bringing even more money uh, in and Am I wrong, making it even more competitive uh, in terms of pricing? I think that helps us because I think we were winning. And so by doubling down on a winning strategy, I feel like it's only going to be positive for our shareholders and then uh, ultimately the Just Eat Takeaway shareholders. But I think you still need to, to take a step back and think about 
we are the most valuable asset in the world because we are the only profitable player in the world's largest food delivery and takeout market. And so if you think about the ramifications five years down the road, the U.S. is a must-win market for anyone who claims to be the global leader. And so allowing uh, a U.S. competitor, specifically Uber, to rationalize the U.S. market and generate hundreds of millions of dollars in profit, then that would be transported to other countries and specifically European capitals. That was an unacceptable outcome for any of the global leaders uh, out there right now. So you have to think about the broader workings and how, um, you know, and, and how this process unfolded and why there is so much value being created for, for Grub shareholders. I mean, 60% premium from a pre-rumor basis until uh, the night before last uh, what, it, it was a seventy-five dollar deal on the table before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the leak happened. I get it. But you were close, it, Matt. You were really from. close with Uber. I mean, you were close. One nine two five. You had the ratio done. I mean, it was just about them not agreeing necessarily to your concerns on antitrust, right? Uh, you just no, couldn't get there no. on that. But it wasn't about price. No, no, no. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. See, uh, I think, no? unfortunately, you've been privy to a very one-sided narrative. Uh, at least that's what I've seen. Uh, through your reporting in the well, last no, few months. Well, no, that's not this, true. I've, I've been speaking to there both was, sides, oh, as Matt, you well know, fair. all the time, Matt. Come on, you know me, that. Now, no uh, way. No. I mean, I've been presenting, Excuse in me. fact, your, your valid concerns about antitrust. You know that. That's, Come on. That is, um, so I, I'm not going to debate that with you. What I will say is that the offer was dramatically different. It was a much higher offer. It was a, a mid-60s-ish offer uh, versus a $75 offer. There was no comparison in terms of economics. There was no comparison in terms of uh, uh, confidence to get the deal done. And then here we are in a position where we can continue executing across our aggressive uh, financial uh, uh, competitive strategy and win.